Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Commodity TV in a new edition of our virtual interview series. Today, we want to talk to Michael Connott, who is the CEO of Visla Silver. Good morning to Canada. How are you doing, Michael? Well, doing very well, Jochen. Thank you very much for having us. And uh, you know, we've been a proud uh, partner of yours for, for quite some time here. So thank you for having the, the interview today. Yeah, super. Thanks for taking the time. And I should also disclose that I am a happy and long-term shareholder of Visla Silver, uh, mm. because I think, Michael, you and the team did an outstanding job from the beginning. I remember, I think I did my first TV show when the stock was at 35 cents. Then it rocked to like $3. Then it consolidated, which is absolutely normal. And still, the stock is doing very well. And you guys really delivered. So 2021 was uh, yeah, a transitional year, but also a great year of exploration for you. You did uh, over 100,000 meters uh, of diamond drilling at Panuco, and I think the results speak for themselves. Can you please elaborate a bit 2021 to wrap it up a bit for our viewers? Well, it was a you know very exciting year for the company in the sense that um, you know we, we were able to do a very well-funded drill campaign. And uh, the drill campaign was focused on uh, you know, two things, really. One the primary role was to expand and discover and, and grow the resource area. So that's Tejitos and Napoleon, as well as some smaller veins in that general area. Uh, but Napoleon and Tejitos are going to be the, the basis of our initial resource, our maiden resource, which will come out in this quarter, Q1 of this year. Mm -hmm. um, but the drilling that went into that was really game changing for Vizsla. So that was the main focus. And, you know, now it's grown into, uh, you know, cumulative strike of over a kilom or three kilometers, um, you know, very deep mineralization so far, it's still open at depth, but we drilled to about 400 meters uh, deep and, you know, a great competent vein width here. So about three meters to three and a half meters on average between the two, um, the two veins. So all that together creates a, you know, a huge opportunity for a large resource uh, for Vizsla. Uh, but that's just getting started for us. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, that's less than 5% of the overall vein extent that we know about in the district. Uh, simply put, this is a huge district. And so in 2021, we we did a good job of building that foundation of, of a resource. Um, now in 2022, I, I won't get too far ahead here, but 2022 is going to be about growing that resource and expanding and, and, and finding more discoveries across the district as well. So, you know, such an exciting year, 2021. 2022 is going to be even more exciting from my point of view. Mm -hmm. Super. So how many ounces do you think you need at least uh, to really get, let's say, a production scenario started? Just a guess from you. I know it's a forward looking statement, but with what would you feel comfortable? Well, I, I, I suppose the best way to uh, you know, talk about that, unfortunately, I, I can't give a number, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, not until the, the resource comes out. And, and, you know, it shouldn't be too much longer to wait for that. Uh, but I think the best way to talk about what would create a, a, a production decision for us uh, is really centered around the history of the district, which is it's been in, in production for, for many years. This is a huge district that, that Beasley consolidated. Um, and, you know, I think this has the potential to be one of the largest districts, silver districts in Mexico. And I, if you look at comparable districts like San Dimas uh, or, or Fresnillo or you know, some of these large uh, epithermal districts in Mexico, um, you know, the production rates of that and, and, the, and the size of, of the resource, you know, over time is, is well into the hundreds of millions of, of ounces of silver. So these districts keep going. There's there's over, you know, there's 75, probably now there's, you know, that we've mapped about 85 kilometers of, of vein extent in the district. Well, we've only drilled three kilometers of that. Um, so it's, it, you know, it, our, the potential here is going to be enormous. I'll point to the upcoming resources as a, uh, you know, a guide to how big it could be. Um, and, you know, in terms of making our decision to enter production, I think we're very confident that that'll be the case for this project in the near future. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. So you have concentrated so far more on the western portion of the district. Do you want to change something in the upcoming 2022 drilling program? And I think you want to do 120,000 meters also, right? Yeah, that's right. So we have 10 rigs on the property right now, which is a globally significant drill program. This is a very large program, certainly for drill, for silver, one of the largest in the world. Um, we're going to expand that by 30%. We're going to go to 13 rigs this year. And that's a lot of data. That's a lot of information. We have an excellent team 
Uh, we have uh, an excellent you know, group of people that are helping us at the project that, that work for Vizla. Now, just as an aside, I'll say that 70% of our team is from the local community down there. Um, and, uh, you know, pretty much our entire team is, is Mexican. Um, you know, so we, you know, you know, this is a, you know, an excellent, um, you know, investment in the, in, in the country of Mexico, as well as, as the state of Sinaloa. We're, we're very happy to be there and, and, and love being in, in Mexico. Um, but, um, you know, the reason that we divided the, the district up into three, uh, three sections, essentially, uh, this year is so that we can manage the the work program a little bit better in the sense that the western portion is going to be focused pretty much on on resource ex, ex, expansion at napoleon and tejitos as well as some exploration uh the the central third of the district so the the center block of that is going to be focused on following up on existing discoveries so san antonio at cordon de loro as well as uh, a number of discoveries that we've made uh, towards the end of the year there at uh, at the northern portion of animus uh, so there's two two centers of, of gravity there that we're going to be exploring around in the center block. And then in the, the eastern block of the, the, the district, we're going to be looking at earlier stage generative uh, exploration with with discovery drilling on uh, several you know known veins that we've we've mapped over the, the last year and a half. So um, I think it's easier to understand if we just think about Western resource expansion plus some exploration center following up on on discoveries. And then eastern uh, portion, we're looking at you know new discoveries. How do we you know show that yes that you know that that this is the district that is going to continue to grow? I think it's important to have a pipeline of uh, of resources through that. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, sounds like a great game plan to me, honestly. Um, I saw also in your press release that you are working on preliminary metallurgical testing, initial geotechnical, and hydrogeological studies. Can you elaborate a bit on that and give us an update? What's the status there? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we're, we're confident that this district, you know, based on its production history, you know, it's going to be a mine uh, for us again here in, in, in a large scale mine at that. And, um, you know, the reason that we're doing this type of work in the background is, uh, you know, to give ourselves an advantage, you know, basically doing this work um, quietly um, so that by the time that we have the resource and the studies around that and make that decision to go into production, you know, we're, we're ahead of the game here. So, you know, the MET testing, you, you know, we've looked at Napoleon and, and the metallurgical testing there uh, initially appears to be uh, quite favorable. We, we don't have the, the final results to put out yet, but, um, you know, that's coming in the coming weeks here. But so far, the early indications are that the, the metallurgy um, is quite favorable. And, and that's something that we, we knew because of the, you know, the production in the, in the district that we've, we've witnessed ourselves. But it's good to have uh, confidence in that from... Um, you know, from, from Canadian laboratories and stuff. Um, now, the hydrological and, and the, the environmental baseline testing that we're doing, you know, in addition to, you know, being a good corporate citizen and, and being a member of the community there um, by, you know, doing baseline studies and understanding the, you know, the growth and, and the flora and the fauna there of, of the area, um, you know, that's something that's important for the, you know, further permitting as well, too, of underground workings and things like that. So, um, you know, in the background, as we drill and have this exciting drilling uh, resource expansion program, we're also doing the work to de-risk the project towards production. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And I think one part of that is also that you are also uh, with the Ejidos communities, with the local ones in discussion for a 30-year exploitation, right? So uh, that looks quite good, I hope. Yeah, no, it is good, and and um, you know we're we're very fortunate that uh, you know again to be to be in this community that we're in. I you know I I really quite enjoy um, being there in Sinaloa, and, and the team that we have is is excellent, and the communities that we work in are, are, are great hosts, and and so you know we'd like to have alignment with them in these thirty year agreements. So we have three thirty year agreements that we've signed uh, that include exploitation, um, you know, which is a very positive outcome. Um, you know, that is to say that the, the critical areas of the part of the project are, you know, are, are, are not being held up by any, any issues there. And we have great relationships with the Hedos. Um, again, de-risking the project as we move towards production. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. I think you also want to list on the NICE in the U.S. Yeah. I think that would be a big step, right? Well, we, we have. Uh, so last oh, week, you have? Uh, two yeah. weeks ago, actually, we, we, uh, we've listed on the, the, uh, the NICE. And so... Um, you know, great, great accomplishment. Our team worked very, very diligently and, and, and performed better than I've, uh, I've never actually heard of a, a listing go this, this quickly with, um, 
uh, you know, company. And so our, our CFO and our corporate secretary uh, worked very, very hard at that and, and, and did a great job. And so we, we're currently trading um, on the uh, the NYSE under VZLA. So, you know, if, you, if you're interested in buying some shares of Vizla, which I suggest, you can uh, you can do that uh, now on the, uh, the NYSE. And, um, you know, it's uh, it's great for us now that we're able to uh, kind of exp- be exposed to uh, a broader market in, in, in the United States. So we're very happy about that. Mm, super. Um, have you had a, already any response, let's say, from institutions, etc., from the U.S. Do, through that listing? Uh, yeah, you know, it's been a, it's been a very positive uh, response. And, and um, you know, it's something that that uh, it's not a. Uh, you know, an instant uh, switch, uh, you know, that where, where you, you get that exposure, but it allows us now to, um, you know, to basically appeal to different things like indices and indice funds and, and things like that and and, uh, and um, different different groups that can invest. And so we're, we're going to do um, marketing around this as well, too, uh, later in the year, certainly around the um, uh, the resource that's coming up shortly here. We're, we're, we're looking to do a bit of a, uh, a marketing uh, exposure. Um, you know, investor meetings and things like that in the United States. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Super. Last question. Anything uh, which uh, causes a headache or keeps you up at night? You know what? Uh, I think, you know, the, the, the one thing that I, I will say is that we have such an excellent team. So, um, you know, our team uh, really, I'm, I'm convinced, is, is, is the best in Mexico. And so, um, you know, keeping that um, functioning well and and um you know sharing the upside with our team and things like that you know that that's always very important to us and so um you know i'm, I'm very happy with uh you know with the work that we're doing and, and and love to see that continue super perfect michael all is in good shape good standing thank you very much for the update wish you all the best have a great day and a great weekend Thank you very much, Elkin. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was Michael Connor, the CEO of Whistler Silver, the fantastic yeah, silver developer from Mexico. That The guys are doing everything correct. And uh, honestly, I must say those 5% of the property they have just uh, yeah, explored with over 120,000, uh, 130,000 meters altogether might look as Swiss cheese already, but 2022 will be a real big year again for them. 13 rigs 120,000 meters in addition but even more important in the first quarter a resource estimate and that's exactly what we are all waiting for as shareholders because then we have the proof of concept that that will be right and they have a basis to really build on a future production so i would suggest you really look for Visla Silver, if you don't own it, check the company out. I'm a shareholder of the company and I stay there. That is also for sure. I think Michael and the team are doing a great job and they are delivering. This will be the next big silver producer in Mexico. Thanks for watching us and bye-bye from Switzerland.